Okay guys, I've got a world record set up in the McLaren Longtail ready for you now. We're going to go through a quick track guide. We're running ABS and traction control on for this setup. Thought I'd start varying some setups, see if people some different types of setups uh, instead of doing all assists or whatever. Just doing a few variations. We had to do a warm up lap to get our brakes nice and warm for this lap. So then we're going to break down into turn one just before the 100, really hard, down into second gear. Stay nice and tight to the right hand side for this, this corner. Gives you a lot of um, traction coming out of the bend. Then we're going to go down into the braking zone where we're going to break just before the 100 on the right there. Just down into second gear again, staying nice and tight onto the kerb, hard on the power, try not to run too wide there or you'll get the end penalty. Then we're going down into the right hander up here. We're going to break, look out for the sound on the left and we're breaking just as that ends there, you see. Down into second gear, then into first gear, keep it nice and tight on the kerb and hard on the power, as hard as you can. <coughs> Running traction so we can really get on the power early now. Now we're coming into the left hander where we're looking out for the, right, the, the 100 on the right again. Breaking down into second gear, stay nice and tight on the kerb again, getting on the power as early as you can. We didn't do that corner perfect, but we stay nice and tight again for the left hander in fourth gear. Then flat out coming into the right, the tight right hander where we're breaking just before the hundred again there, and we're going down into second gear and then into first gear and hard on the power in second gear. Remember we got traction on, so we can really get on the power nice and early. Obviously, we'll go through some setup changes that you can make depending on what assist you use in a minute. And then we're coming into the right hander where we want to go down into fourth gear and really try and hit that curb as hard as you can. We didn't take as much speed as we possibly could have done. So there was probably another half a second in this lap. <clears throat> but we'll go through the setup quickly and maybe some changes that you could make if you use assist. Or what assist you don't use. So as you can see there, we had quite a big improvement from our previous best. So there's probably another, uh, I'd say half a second to um, probably come off this, maybe a 21.6, 21.5 I'd say. But we'll go through the setup now, quickly going through some of the changes that I made. Obviously we had traction control on so we could afford to run a bit more acceleration slipper than what we normally would. So brake pressures, I still only had them on 90% even though I had ABS on. I, prefer, I seem to prefer that, it seems to carry a bit more speed through the corners having them slightly lower I think. Um, brake ducks were all the way down to zero. Warning for race. This is a pure qualifying setup. Do not try running zero percent for race distances on the um, brake ducks. You will just overheat your tyres. They were burning up after like a couple of laps here, so it's just a time trial setup. This. Um, you can see that obviously I raised them right up, and then tyre pressures slightly lower on the rear, but not too much. Seem to give a nice balance for this track. And um, brake balance fifty five on the front. Um, probably could have gone a little bit more rearward, but you risk the chance of the back end sliding out a little bit <coughs> on some of the braking zones. Remember, <coughs> if you're using no assist, like no ABS, you will need to reduce the brake pressures down to 75 to 85%. Just trial and error, and brake pressure, brake balance will have to go maybe up a few to maybe 60 to stop the rear locking up. Um, all this is um, like fuel, that's irrelevant because it's time trial. Brake mapping all the way left, restrict all the way right. Make sure you put the restrictor all the way to the right for maximum power in this. Uh, let's go back to the gear in there. I think we, we missed the gear in there. Um, so obviously the gear, and I think I did change some slight alterations to the gear. And so just take note of the numbers on the right. It's probably not perfect because I only did a quick setup. It's a base setup. Um, it would need further adjustments, but it, it's obviously okay because it got me the world record. Um, acceleration slip, we had traction on so we could, we could go up to 30, 38% is that I think there, yeah. And the deceleration slip 68, we, remember if you're using no assist you, you want to go lower on the acceleration, higher on the deceleration. Um, Preload, maybe up a bit if you're using no assist but I'm not too sure, it might actually be okay on 30, you just have to trial and error that. Um, we lowered some of the bump stops with this car just to give us a bit um bit lower centre of gravity around this track it just seems to help with stability <coughs> suspension bump stop was quite aggressive not too aggressive though nothing like what I'd run with a Z4 anyway um, let's have a little look at the rebounds were pretty aggressive not too bad though and um, ride height now I found that raising the rear up a bit helped with the front end grip obviously you don't want the front end sliding so if your front end still sliding raise the rear ride height up a bit it'll push the front end down to the ground so you won't get that understeer slide that you can get with some cars that's one thing I've always found on, on this game if you're getting any of the understeer slide on the front tyres raise the rear ride height up a bit <coughs> it'll give you a bit more grip on the front end um, <coughs> it's 
spring rates slightly harder on the rear than the soft. That was obviously to give a bit more grip on the front end because I found the front was sliding a bit. Um, cambers, obviously running traction control on. You don't need to go as a, um, far with the track um, the cambers on the rear, so we could run them a little bit lower because you don't need the grip on the rear. If we're running traction off, I'd probably guess that the cambers may need to go up slightly on the rear. Um, downforce two five. I found that's quite a nice setting for literally pretty much every track I've ever done. I think Silverstone ran a little bit higher, but then Road America. I think when I did it was zero three, but it's just trial and error. You don't lose too much with downforce on this guy. You you find you gain it on the corners, what you lose on the straight. So it's not a massive difference with the with the um, downforce on this car. Um, just quickly go through the four feedback settings as they never change, but we'll quickly go through them. And then I'll leave you a little replay of the lap that I did anyway. Um, we'll have some more setups to come shortly. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.